Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen, amen. Our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, has called you into his house to hear his good news. His good news is that God has a dream, and as the old men dream dreams, so we are called to have dreams, the dream of God, and that is the gospel of Jesus Christ. We'll tease that apart a little bit further here in our message today. Welcome all of you to worship on this wonderful day. 
we, uh, we will acknowledge the accomplishments of our seniors and, um, and then also um, have our Sunday school kids will be joining us here as we begin our worship. Some announcements, though, before we begin. Um, one is that uh, we had a, a change in schedule that we do a, a, a Bible and brew on Tuesday, the first and third Tuesday. And um, I had a, a first and third Tuesday, and I had a conflict. So we're going to have Bible and brew at the Ward House this coming Tuesday at 7 o'clock. And, um, and then um, we also uh, are going to be making a transition to a summer hours of worship, 9.30 on Sunday and at 6.30 on Wednesdays. And we're going to follow us through June, July, and August. Uh, it'll follow Sunday um, as the lead, of course, at the beginning of the week. And so next week we'll start with a contemporary tone. The following week will be in a traditional tone and so forth. So um, please make note of that, and we'll make sure that all our means of advertising and whatnot will reflect those times. Um, we're hoping that county fair is going to happen as advertised, and one of those things is a fair booth. And we need to know if those who are members of the congregation are interested in participating. So we ask that it, whether it's on your envelope of your, um, of your uh, offering or on the communion card, if you would state you're interested, if you've already put that in the basket for today, um, there's also a sign-up in the back of the church in the welcome table that we would love to have you sign on to say, just at least that you have interest in following through and sitting some time at a booth to, uh, to um, you know, just let the community know that we are here. And there's really, really just more of a social thing. It's not so much of much work. So please uh, indicate your interest one way or another. Otherwise, I'm going to leave the rest of the announcements in the, um, in the bulletin and the inserts speak for themselves. And um, they should be sufficient here. Um, I'm going to ask the Sunday school children to come forward. They're going to open us up with song, and then we'll recognize our seniors.
children. <laughs> Betty, I'm sorry. I'm disappointed they don't like that song. I mean, it's just... I, like I know you do like that song. It was clear that you like that song. Thanks for singing. Thank you, children. That brings the conclusion of our Sunday school. We look forward to seeing all of you in Vacation Bible School, which will come before we know it. Dear friends, it seems like um, they're little like this, and we, we giggle at their loud voices and whatnot, and then the, and the next thing you know, it, they grow up on us, and they, they have dreams, and we'll talk more about that later, but we have a handful of individuals here that uh, we're awfully proud of you. Um, all of you and were little once upon a time when you were part of our Sunday school program, and now it's, it, it's bittersweet to see you in your, in your gowns knowing that you've grown up, that you are going to be men and women pursuing your dreams um, in so many ways. And, and we want to send you off with our prayers and with our, our hearts and minds, totally, totally thinking of you as you pursue those dreams wherever the Lord takes you. Um, we probably have the largest class of seniors that we've had in the history of this congregation. And so those of you that are present, when I call your name, would you just stand and turn and face the, the congregation? Sophie Aylander, who is the daughter of Michael Aylander and Amy and Eric Strabi. Hannah Dale, who is the daughter of Nathan and Heather Dale. Mason Galoff, who is the son of Mike and Tiffany Galoff. Morgan Honstead, who is the daughter of Rich and Amanda Honstead. Tyler Klinger, who is the son of Tony and Heidi Klinger. Dominic Longauger, who is the son of Seth and, and Melissa Longauger. Braden Peterson, who is the son of Liz Patterson. <clears throat> uh, Matthew Sieberson, son of... Randy and Diane Sieberson, Jesse Thill, and the son of Christy and Hunter Jensen, and Brody Wirtz, who is the son of Aaron and Tina Wirtz. Would you give a, a praise to God through a round of applause for these young people? I was there at a Wednesday night at the scholarship uh, uh, program, and virtually the majority of our, of our youth um, are honor students, and so we are so pl proud of their accomplishments. Uh, young people, you can turn and face me. Um, there are quilts in the back of the narthex, narthex on, the, on the pew back there, and you get to choose what kind of pattern fits your personality. Um, it's, it's got a little piece that's ironed on here, and as you go out into the world, <clears throat> May this quilt be a reminder of your family's love and the nurturing love of this Christian community, Christ the King Lutheran Church. Wherever you go, when the night is cold and you feel alone, may this help you to remember that you are not alone, Christ the King Lutheran Church quilters. So each of you, um, when we're done with service, um, pick the, the design that you like. There's uh, all sorts of varieties of colors, and so I'm sure there'll be something. And... Uh, they are handy to make you feel a little closer to home when, you, when you're off on your journeys. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we give you thanks for the, for the blessings of children, and especially as children grow older, as graduates of high school. It's easy to take these kind of accomplishments for granted, O oh Lord. But may we never, never lose sight that education fine education that we receive in this, in, this, in this school district is a gift from you. That while the training of these young people have just begun to pursue their dreams, we ask, O oh Lord, that you continue to be with them as you have promised. Lo, I am with you always until the end of the age. We ask you, Jesus, by the power of your Spirit, that you keep these young people in the faith, the true faith of life everlasting in you. We know that we are sending them into a world that would have them believe differently that there's other things that can offer salvation. We bid you, O Lord, by word and by your spirit, that you keep them ever safe to you. We celebrate them, O Lord, as you celebrate them, sons and daughters of your love and your mercy. Grant us all a heart, a joyful heart, as we release them to your care to pursue their dreams and aspirations. We look forward to seeing them to be leaders in your church as they mature in faith. We pray this in your holy name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. You may be seated.
Peace of the Lord be with you all. Would you stand and share that peace through a handshake or, or a greeting from afar, whatever you're comfortable with. We invoke the name of the true God, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We read in the first letter of John that if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So let us take a moment to silently confess our sins before our holy God. And then we'll join together and sing our confession song that's in the bulletin. If you need the music, it's an inside cover of the green hymnal. i 
the Lord has had mercy on you and has sent his only beloved son, Jesus Christ, to be the atoning sacrifice for your sin. By his word and by his promise, I declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, you are forgiven. You are set free. find there in the middle of page two is our prayer of the day. I invite you to pray this prayer with me. Oh God, you taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending to them the light of your Holy Spirit. Grant us by the same Spirit to have a right judgment in all things and evermore to rejoice in his holy comfort. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Let us hear from God. Reading God's Word today is Wendy Decker. Our first reading this morning comes from the book of Ezekiel, chapter 37. The Lord came to Ezekiel and granted him a vision of Israel's resurrection from the dead. Through the breath of life, God's promise was to bring withered, lifeless, dry bones back to vitality. This image served as a promise to Israel that they would be brought home from the place of death and restored to a new life in God's presence. Ezekiel 37, verses 1 through 14. The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of the valley, It was full of bones, and he led me around among them, and behold, there were very many on the surface of the valley, and behold, they were very dry. And then he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, you know. And then he said to me, Prophesy over these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a sound, and behold, a rattling And the bones came together, bone to its bone. And I looked, and behold, there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them. But there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them. And they lived and stood on their feet, an exceedingly great army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are indeed cut off. Therefore, prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will open your graves, 
and I will raise you from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people. And I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you in your own land. And then you shall know that I am the Lord. I have spoken, and I will do it, declares the Lord. Here ends our first reading. Our psalm for this morning is found on page three. We will read that responsively, please. I will start and read the odd verses if the congregation will please respond with the even verses set in bold type. Psalm 139, verses 1 through 15. To the choir master, a psalm of David. O Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. Thou, thou knowest when I sit down and, and when I rise up. up. Thou, thou discernest my thoughts from afar. Thou searchest out my path and my lying down, and art acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, lo, O Lord, thou knowest it all together. Thou dost beset me behind and before, and layest thy hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high, I cannot attain it. Whither shall I go from thy spirit? Or whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend to heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed chill, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there thy hand shall lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. If I say, let only darkness cover me, and the light about me be night, even in the darkness is not too dark to be. The night is bright as the day, for darkness is as light with thee. For thou didst form my inward parts, thou didst knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise thee, for thou art fearful and wonderful. Wonderful are thy works, thou knowest me right well. My frame was not hidden from thee when I was being made in secret, intricately wrought in the depths of the earth. Here ends our psalm. Our second lesson today comes from the book of Acts, chapter 2. As Jesus had promised while he was still with his followers, the Holy Spirit arrived on Pentecost while they were gathered together in the same house. The sound of the Spirit was like a rushing wind that filled the entire dwelling and landed on each of them who were present as a divided tongue of fire. All who were gathered spoke different languages, and yet all were able to understand one another. Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. When the day of Pentecost arrived, the apostles were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues as of fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven, and at this sound, the multitude came together, and they were bewildered, because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. They were amazed and astonished, saying, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? How is it that we hear each of us in his own native language, Parthians and Medes and Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Roman, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians. We hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others, mocking, said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you 
and give ear to my words. For these people are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the prophet of Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, your old men shall dream dreams. Even on my male servants and female servants in those days, I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the day of the Lord comes, that great and magnificent day. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Here ends our second reading. I invite you to stand for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 15th and 16th and 17th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. But when the Helper, Jesus said, When the Helper comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, who proceeds from the Father, and will bear witness about me, and you also will bear witness because you have been with me from the beginning. I did not say these things to you from the beginning because I was with you, but now I am going to him who sent me. And none of you ask me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. Concerning sin, because they do not believe in me. Concerning righteousness, because I go to the Father, and you will see me no longer. Concerning judgment, because the ruler of this world is judged. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, But whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, for he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. Therefore I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Children, come forward for a message, please. sit down over here guys thank you thank you thank you well it's good to see all of you thank you for singing thank you for sharing your voice your voice of song with us today god um a special day. Things have changed. You used to have white up here. Now there's a lot of red. And um, we see some, um, some things that are different, like, like there's flames here on this, on this stole of mine. It reminds us of the Spirit, especially what happens on Pentecost. And we have some flames, some candles, and that's, you know, there's nothing in the Bible that says you will do this, but we have these things to remind us of the presence of God's Spirit when we worship. What's on the front of this baptismal font here, sir? What do you see, Owen? A bird. Yeah. And we get this from the descending dove, this Holy Spirit upon Jesus like a dove. And so fonts all over the country in Christian churches, many of them symbol of the Holy Spirit as a dove. And so we're here because of the work of the Holy Spirit. Now, these high school seniors here, you know, they, they talk about school spirit. And, and maybe when you get older and maybe you've gone there already, you go to a football game or you go to a basketball game or some other sporting event and it's not uncommon and I'm sure because they did it 
years and years ago when I was a senior, and then they're still doing it. They'll do it when you're a senior, you know. We got spirit. Yes, we do. We got spirit. How about you? And they're supposed to come back at you. We got spirit. Yes, we do. We got spirit. How about you? And this goes back and forth, back and forth. And how does it end? How does it end? We got more. We got more. And then it falls apart. That's just what we do. We talk about spirit. But this is a different kind of spirit. This is a spirit that comes to us when we point to the baptismal font where you've been baptized in the name of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and the Spirit enters you and you believe. The Holy Spirit creates a faith in you. A faith that says, I believe that Jesus Christ is my Lord. The Bible says that no one can say Jesus is Lord without the Holy Spirit. And so you always have the Spirit with you. We can grieve the Spirit, and, and sometimes, sometimes people go so far away from the Word of God that maybe even the Spirit leaves them. But God will work hard to bring the Spirit back to Him. The Spirit is what we need in order to believe. The Spirit is what we need to have heaven everlasting. The Spirit is what we need to believe that all our sins are washed away by the blood of Jesus Christ. When I said just moments ago, when we had our confession and absolution, I said that you're forgiven. The only way that you could believe I'm truly forgiven is what Jesus has done for me is because of the Spirit. We don't talk a lot about the Spirit, do we? We do a lot of talking about Jesus here. And it would be like this, Holy Spirit, I'd like to talk about you. And the Holy Spirit said, yeah, that's great, but I want you to talk about Jesus. No, 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 Holy Spirit, I want to talk about you. And the Holy Spirit goes, yeah, that's great, but I want you to talk about Jesus. Because the Holy Spirit wants us to keep our eyes focused on Jesus. Jesus sent his helper, the Spirit, so that we would believe in Jesus. He told us so. And so it's okay to make a big to-do about the Spirit, but the Spirit would rather have us think about Jesus. Because Jesus is the one that died in Calvary's cross, who paid for all our sins with his holy blood. He rose again, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, we know that we'll rise again too, even if we die. Let's pray. Oh, Jesus, thank you. Thank you by sending your helper, your spirit. And so, whether we're young or whether we're old, we can say we believe, based upon what your spirit has done in our hearts cause us to believe as you as our only source of salvation jesus we don't totally understand all this but we know that by the word your word and by the spirit we can learn these things and hold on to them as truth your truth we pray this jesus in your holy name amen amen so go ahead and take an m&m thank you for coming on up Dear friends, uh, turn to your bulletin and we'll sing our next hymn, our next song, I Will Follow.
Let us pray. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Dear brothers, dear sisters in Christ, grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who is the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. I start off by greeting you, dear graduates. God, wasn't that long ago you were in confirmation. I couldn't make you to be quiet. Now here you are. Young men and women. Moving on to the next chapter. But we need to finish this chapter first. And we've got other things to do. You've got the pomp and circumstance of graduation. The actual, actual program to go through. You'll receive your diplomas. But every one of us were like you once upon a time, and, and there were dreams, dreams already that you can't wait to get started on. You're going to be traveling out of state, some of you, and some of you will stay within state, and, and you're going to pursue these things. You have ideas that you're going to change the world. Keep those ideas. We have to be careful about dreams because dreams can inspire us. They can cause us to get up out of bed in the morning to pursue those dreams, but sometimes these dreams can lead us in such a way they may lead us down the wrong road because these dreams were not founded on good things. There'll be no shortage of advice for you. The worst kind of advice is stuff that you don't ask for, so I'll try not to do it right now. But when I was your age, I was going to be a veterinarian. I I had it all figured out. All figured out. Then this thing called chemistry came along and totally changed the dream. Totally changed the dream. And I'm thankful for it. Because this was not the dream to be here in a pulpit. But I couldn't have picked a better thing to do with my life. I want to draw your attention to all of you, dear friends, to the words of the apostle now, Peter, as he addresses the men and women who were listening to him, all that, people from all over the land. Wendy did such a wonderful job reading those complicated regions. Oh, they're just drunks. No, it's pretty early for this. And they were speaking in tongues. They were speaking in the language of these people from all over the Mediterranean. And Peter points back to the Old Testament. And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters will prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even on my male servants and female servants, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy, says the Lord through the mouth of his prophet, through the mouth of his apostle on Pentecost. For the disciples, it must have been an emotional ride. Each one of them were called by name from our Jesus to come, if you recall, to be fishers of men. They saw the amazing miracles. They heard the beautiful words of Jesus. They witnessed firsthand the coming of the kingdom of God. And a chosen three even got to see Jesus transformed. They got to see a keyhole vision of who Jesus really is. But then there was also those moments that those constant, the constant battling against the Jewish religious leaders who were looking for Jesus just to just step out of line, just an itsy bit. And they were all over him. They were told that they could perform miracles and they performed miracles and then suddenly they could not perform miracles. Jesus did not abandon them when, when he died. And that must have been, it was bad enough. If, if, if Judas' betrayal was a bad dream, the death of your Lord and Savior Jesus, who you've spent three years walking with on Calvary's cross, must have been a nightmare. And three days later, the women show up. It's this dreamt up idea. They saw Jesus living living Jesus. And Jesus shows up, invites them to take a poke at him. You know, go ahead, touch me. Put, put your hand here. You got any fish to eat? 
And so he tells them, I have to go, but in four and for you to have my helper, I must go. I know you're sad, but this must take place. And the rush of the wind of Pentecost and the, and the funny flames of fire above their heads and them speaking languages that they were never formally taught in, suddenly they must have realized the dream has come true. Finally, truly on the mountaintop. This was a necessity so that people would know God's dream. God's dream that he has for every person who has walked this earth and you, all you, my friends, including our graduates, the dream that God has for you. God has a dream that you know him, that you trust him, Every time you've crossed the thresholds of this building as you've come to worship, we've gathered around word and song, the inerrant, infallible word. I don't know where that King James, James version came for the Psalms today, but King James is a 12th grade reading level, so you graduates should have been able to read that just fine. But this word is perfect, and this word transforms. This word can, world can, this word can open up broken hearts, hardened hearts. Songs that are grounded in the Word of God and preaching the same. That Sunday school class is like, oh, Sunday school. But we made a commitment to you, graduates. When this church started, we weren't going to just give you Jesus stickers and a popsicle stick, pat you on the head, and send you home. We taught you and continue to teach our Sunday school children. And you've helped us. Bring the truth of God's word in a way that little people can digest it. We hear of God's plan and dreams as we pounded through confirmation class. It's hard to teach church teachings, church doctrine. That's the last thing you want to do is hear an old man go on. But you tolerated me, thank you. We summarize our faith in the Apostles' Creed and what we'll say today and confess in our Nicene Creed. We come into this building and we see the silent witnesses of these beautiful stained glass windows here in this nave and those powerful stained glass windows in the chapel. They confess to us without even saying words, what is it that we worship? The wood carvings on the various parts of our worship utensils here speak to us without saying words. Who is it that we worship? The one who is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning, the end of your faith, the beginning and the end of your life. You're Jesus. And all those words and symbols and memories that you have in this place are merely a beginning of God's dream for you and for all of us. Christ sent his spirit into the world so that we would know who he is, Christ. That we would believe. Beginning in Pentecost was the beginning, the proclamation of this good news. And it goes on, beginning in Jerusalem and all over the Mediterranean basin. And now here in Wasika, it continues on, this good news of Jesus Christ. And you are part of that dream that God has for you and for the world. God would have that you would know this. That he loves you beyond your wildest imagination. That when he says in his word, nothing can separate you from my love, it's the time to take God literally. Nothing can separate us from his love. We're awfully fond of the works of Martin Luther here, and we're, we use the small catechism as the textbook that goes along with the scriptures to help us understand, open up the scriptures. Luther wrote a large catechism, which was intended for pastors to be able to minister to people properly the word of God. In that third article, the Apostles' Creed, that's that last paragraph of the Apostles' Creed speaking about the Holy Spirit, Luther wrote this, creation is past. There's a window back there about that. That's the first article. I believe in God the Father, creator of heaven and earth. Redemption is accomplished. Hallelujah. That's the second article, the second paragraph. We don't have to work through our sins, if I may paraphrase Luther. We don't have to do anything to receive salvation. Jesus has done it all. Amen. 
But the Holy Spirit, Luther continues, carries on his work unceasingly until the last day. Until the last day. For this purpose, he has appointed a community on earth through which he speaks and does all his work. For he has not yet gathered all his Christian people, nor has he completed the granting of forgiveness. Therefore, believe in him who daily brings us into this community through the word and imparts and increases and strengthens our faith with the same word and the forgiveness of sins. Thus, when his work has been finished and we abide in it, having died to the world and all evil, he will finally make us perfectly and eternally holy. We now wait in faith for this to be accomplished through the word. You young people have plans. You're going to live forever. You're going to be an old, old man or an old, old woman. And these things already in your head is this, is this list, and they've got boxes by them, and you've got to check them off. Eventually, you'll start calling it a bucket list. And these are the things that you want to get accomplished. But do not fail to remember all this is vain. Vanity, vanity, the Scriptures talk it. Unless your dreams include Jesus. Because I don't care what you want to pursue as long as it's right and holy, meaning proper and it's doesn't, not at the expense of other people. It doesn't degrade anybody. You're not profiting on the backside of someone else's life. Whatever you pursue is going to be God-pleasing as long as you bring it with Jesus. And he does this for you, so it's good news. And all your dreams, all your dreams are important to God. Now, it's easy, my friends, to talk to these wonderful people right here and speak about, what about you? What about you? Many of us have been around the block enough times. Oh, I've had dreams. <laughs> Turned out well. Or I'm too old to dream. I'm too old to have a dream. Nay. Ultimately, you realize that the dream of dreams is to be walking with your Lord in the new heaven and new earth. Ultimately, the dream that I have heard from the lips of those who are on their deathbed is I can't wait to see my Jesus. We're never too old to dream, my friends. And it's a dream that you're not too young to dream of. It is bittersweet. We've watched you grow up before our eyes. By accident, I was going through some pictures when you guys were still in VBS and, and little, little ones. My, how you've grown. Including your hair, Jesus. I want to encourage you to travel hard, press hard in your dreams. Check them always with the Word of God. And make no mistakes, there are plenty of things that will cause you to take your eyes off your dreams and more importantly, will take your eyes off of Jesus. Resist these things. I encourage you to dream, all of you. Dream in your Jesus. And it may seem a little off talking about God having a dream because it's God after all. But, God, but here's the thing. When we've started here and when we grow, we know dreams change. We've changed because of the things that life has come at us. Things unexpected, things expected. They change us and so our dreams change. But God doesn't ever change. He's the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. His word is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. God doesn't change and his dream is this. And it's for all people that they know me and they love me and they know my commandments and they know my love for them. They know how I've sacrificed them. They know that I have prepared for them heaven everlasting. I have conquered death, your Lord says. I have conquered sin. I and I alone give life. This is our Lord's dream. Shall we embrace it? Amen.
The peace of God which surpasses all our understanding guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, now and forever. Amen. As I said, we will say uh, for, as our confession the Nicene Creed. I invite you to stand uh, and uh, let us confess our holy faith. You'll find the Nicene Creed in your bulletin. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit, and he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He is spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We'll receive our offering as while we do so, let us sing the doxology is found in the middle of page 5. Let us pray. Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, our possessions, even our dreams, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God and for all people according to their needs. With each petition, I will end with, Lord, in your mercy, I ask that you would respond with me. Hear our prayer. God of life, pour out the power of your spirit upon your church as we gather at your table. Let the new wine of your presence give us a vision of your coming kingdom. Strengthen us through Christ's body and blood in this sacrament and send us out into your world that we may serve all those in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all wisdom, be with all students as they finish this course in their life especially those who are graduates of our high schools and learning institutions. Be with all those who are graduating and moving on to whatever is next in their lives. Grant parents the strength to permit their children to leave home and to pursue their dreams. And still in all graduates a deep understanding of your call on their lives so they may ser- serve you with all that they do. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, we give you thanks and praise for your Holy Spirit, and we are able to pray, to worship, to live because of what the Spirit has done for us. Continue to fan the flames of faith in our hearts and on our minds. Help us to proclaim with power so all can hear the good news of Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of healing, surround those who are ill, grieving, or in need with the breath of your healing grace and love. Reveal to them your healing compassion through the lives of those who tend and care for them. Grant them new life and renewed health. And we pray especially for those whom we name in our hearts at this time.
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these and more, Lord, we lift to you, knowing that you hear our prayers, all thanks to the work of the Holy Spirit upon our hearts as we lift them to the one who hears all things. We pray this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in the remembrance of me. Taught by our Lord and trusted in his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Congregation, please be seated. Just a quick word concerning Holy Communion. Please review our post within the, uh, uh, the bulletin concerning our practice on Holy Communion. Um, if you desire, we're going to come up by, by family groups, and so provide some distance, um, and we'll serve you at the baptismal font. If you desire grape juice over wine, just please indicate with an index finger. And those who are not able to come up and, and desire to have Holy Communion, please let uh, the usher know and we'll come to you. All things are ready.
I invite you to stand. The body and blood of our risen Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in the one and true faith now and forever. Depart in his peace. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you his peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I ask that you would return to your bulletin for a closing song.
seniors, make sure you pick your quilt, the quilt of your choice back there. Go in peace and serve the Lord. We will. Thanks be to God.